finally elimination. Turns out food spends more time in your colon than it does anywhere else. So how do I know that? Well, let me ask you, how long does a meal spend inside your body? Two hours? Who said two hours? No. I, and then, then, then that would have meant that everybody in here would have been running out to poop already. No. Well, you know, I once had someone ask me, Dr. Mills, how do I know how long a meal stays in my body? Everything that comes out looks alike, right? So I told him, I said, this is what you do. Next time you eat whole kernel corn, look at your watch when you eat it, and then look at the time when you see it again. If you're eating a good high-fiber diet, it will average about 14 to 16 hours. So let's say 16 hours. So how long does food stay in the stomach? About two hours. How long does it take for a meal to pass through the 30 to 35 feet of the small intestine? Actually less than two hours. So we've only accounted for four hours max. So that means the, the rest of that uh, uh, 10 to 12 hours, it's in your colon. And what's it doing there? Hanging out like relatives that won't go home? <laughs> no, it's being acted on by the microbiome to create these short chain fatty acids and other compounds that improve your health. That's if you're eating the right foods and you have the right microbiome. So one of the things that they can do is they activate these phytoestrogens and plant compounds called lignans, and breast cancer risk was decreased by 22% in women with the highest lignin intake. Whole grain rye decreased uh, uh, PSA uh, in men with prostate cancer by 14%. Consumption of soy uh, phytoestrogen reduces both breast cancer and prostate cancer risk in a dose-dependent fashion, meaning the more you eat, the uh, uh, lower the risk. Metabolism of phytoestrogens uh, by these bacterial strains makes them more bioavailable. And bacterial strains that are most effective are those associated with plant-based diets. And this is an example of what happens when you eat the right foods. So what you see here is that when you're eating a high-fiber diet, you have this really thick layer of mucus that has kind of this two uh, phases to it. In the upper layer, you have your bacteria, which are breaking down the fiber. Most importantly, they're creating this uh, uh, short-chain fatty acid that has four carbons called butyrate. Why is butyrate important? It's because colonic cells prefer to use butyrate for their, as their energy source as opposed to extracting uh, uh, nutrition from the bloodstream. So when there's plenty of butyrate present, you see that the, there are nice tight junctions here. The colon cells look very healthy and very happy. You don't get leakage of colon content into your bloodstream. All right? And I'm trying, kind of rushing because uh, I'm about to run out of time. And also, this mucus layer has antibiotic properties in it that kill off bad guys and only let the good guys uh, survive. But what happens if you're not eating enough fiber? Well, you see that, number one, you don't have a thick layer of mucus. And because you're not creating that butyrate, these colon cells are sickly. They can't maintain tight junctions. You start to get slippage of bacteria and bacterial antigens in between the colon cells. And that, my friends, is leaky gut syndrome. And you guys will be able to read all this information when you uh, get the, uh, um, uh, uh, the information from uh, uh, the organizers. It's all there. And studies have shown that leaky gut uh, uh, correlates with a higher risk for depression because um, lipopolysaccharide uh, 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 is a uh, bacterial antigen that um, is higher. Um, uh, people who have major depression have higher uh, levels of antibodies against lipopo lipoprotein polysaccharide. Um, uh, meaning that it shows that they are suffering from this leaky gut mechanism. Um, whereas when people go onto plant-based diets, their colons tend to heal themselves, that, uh, acts, that process reverses, and they're much less prone to having depression. Well, what about dementia? Does diet have anything to do with dementia? Well, this is a, uh, showing you how much meat people eat around the world. The darker the country, the more meat. Why is that important? It's because when you look at Alzheimer's disease, what you see is that the more 
meat a country eats, the higher the incidence and rate of Alzheimer's. The more plant-based a country's diet, the lower their risk of Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, okay? So places like Iceland, the US, Denmark, eating a lot of meat and dairy, very high rates of Alzheimer's. Places where people eat a more plant-based diet, very low rates of Alzheimer's and other dementias. And we now know that our gut is directly connected to our brain, that the bacteria in the gut make neurotransmitters that actually travel to the central nervous system, help your brain function more smoothly, uh, lowers the risk for uh, depression, uh, anxiety, and other disorders. Uh, uh, let me kind of power through these slides and I'll come back to you. And then just in general, again, inflammation, the higher the levels of inflammation, the greater the risk for ultimately developing dementia. Uh, tumor necros tumor, TNF is tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is a, uh, a sign of inflammation. And again, uh, the higher the level, the greater the risk of dementia. So just to uh, touch on some issues of physiology, do uh, carnivores worry about fat and cholesterol? No, they don't. Dogs will not develop car heart disease. Dogs and other carnivores, no matter how much fat and cholesterol you feed them, because they can dispose of it without forming uh, blockages in their arteries. They don't develop gallstones. One of the reasons bear bile is prized in uh, Chinese medicine is because when um, uh, you drink bear bile, the body will take that bile and uh, store it in our gallbladder, and bear bile is so strong, it actually dissolves human uh, cholesterol gallstones. But we also have medicines that do that now, so we don't have to go around killing ba uh, bears. Um, carnivores can detoxify preformed vitamin A, and they manufacture their own vitamin C, whereas we cannot because we are plant dependent. They make urine that's up to two and a half times more concentrated than ours, and they can metabolize excess animal protein without destroying their bones. Only herbivores have carbohydrate digesting enzymes in their saliva. Only herbivores have an appendix. It's part of the uh, gastrointestinal uh, immune system. We cannot detoxify preformed vitamin A, but we can detoxify a wide range of plant alkaloids. We can make vitamin A from beta carotene, but we have to have vitamin C, and we can't eat putrefying flesh, and we can ferment fibers. So, in closing, we have abdicated responsibility for our health and that of our children by allowing profit-driven marketing campaigns to dictate how we eat and feed our families. We gorge ourselves on unhealthy foods and stuff our children full of misnamed Happy Meals until they come to resemble pint-sized Michelin men. Then we throw our hands up in despair when they and we develop asthma, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, depression, and other chronic ailments. We have to remember these chronic diseases didn't fall from the sky at the behest of some malevolent god. They are the consequences of our own actions. And as such, we can change our behavior and improve our health. We were all born without preferences. Nobody asked for fried chicken, ice cream, or pork chop in the delivery room. The unhealthy things we eat, we learn to like. And just like we were taught to like unhealthy foods, we can learn to like healthier ones uh, instead. We can change for the better. We must do this not only for our own benefit, but for the health and well-being of our children and for the planet and its other inhabitants. Wow, just in time. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right. I'll, I'll be more than happy to hang out and answer questions outside. I don't want to keep you guys from lunch. You guys have been a great audience. Thank you. <laughs>